Now we have some Fisher projections. So Fisher projections are a great tool for representing compounds with a lot of stereogenic centers. And also in particular, it makes it easier to notice the, notice the structure, the configuration of, for example, carbohydrates, which are compounded with a lot of stereogenic centers, and therefore that's where the Fisher projections are used perhaps the most often. Now, even though it is, uh, Fisher projections are very um, useful, making things easier in stereochemistry, but there are some rules that you need to, first of all, remember about this uh, Fisher projection. So let's quickly go over them, and then we'll continue with this question. The first one is, for example, if you have, let's say you have this compound and on the side, let's put an H here to make this carbon a stereogenic center. The first thing you want to remember that the groups on the side are the ones that are pointing towards you. This is what this indicates. And these ones are pointing away from you. We can go back like this, so don't show the dashed lines. As long as you remember that these two are pointing towards you, then it would mean that these are pointing away from you. But the point of Fisher projections was to avoid the necessity of drawing the wedge and dashed lines. So this Fisher projection represents this compound. That's one thing that the first thing that you want to remember. Second, there are things that you're not allowed to do in Fisher projections. If you want to rotate this 90 degrees, it's going to change the notation of wedges on the dashes, so you're not allowed to do it. Let's see, we can't do this, let's see why that's the case. Suppose if you do a 90 degree rotation, so we're going to have this, and now the BR is going to be pointing like this, pointing down. We're simply doing this compound here and the corresponding Fisher projection of that, so if we do a 90 degree to this one, is this. We're going to have that and the BR pointing down, and we have the H on the top. Now, this right here in the Fisher projection, it presumes that these two are the wedge lines and these are the dash lines. However, notice that here we have the opposite. We, here we have these two are the wedge lines and these two are the dash lines. So let's also confirm this by the RNS configuration. So that's one, two, and three that goes clockwise, supposedly R, but because these are pointing towards you, that's S. So we have a one, two, three. It's going like this, again clockwise, but because the hydrogen is pointing backwards, so that's R. And you see that by, if we draw a 90 degree rotation, then you're changing the configuration of the Kyle centers. Therefore, so let's put it here. So no 90 degree rotation in Fisher projections. You are allowed to do a 180 degree rotation in the following way. You can only rotate this molecule in the plane of this paper. So imagining you can grab this and rotate it like that. That's allowed, you can do it, that's 180 degrees, because by doing so, what you're getting is this. Now the BR is going to this side, and here you're going to have an H. That's fine, because if we do the, the RNS configuration, you can see that it's the same compound. Now, on the other hand, you cannot do a 180 degree rotation by doing that. So imagine now, grabbing this carbon and pulling towards you, it's kind of coming this way, and then doing a 180 degree rotation. What that leads to is this. So this is going to point down, and this is up, that's good. So here, now you're going to have the BR here, and the H here. Notice the difference between these two. They are now enantiomers, because they are mirror imaged. So. In, in other words, remember this, when you're working with Fisher projections, don't drag the molecule out of the plane. If you want to do 180 degree rotation, that's fine, you can do it, but don't move it out of the plane and do 180 rotation, because in that case you're changing the configuration. Okay, so these are some rules of the Fisher projection, and with that said, let's go back to our question and see what we have. So one thing, the first thing actually that you want to do when you're comparing two different Fisher projections and you're trying to determine the relationship between the molecules is make sure that the groups are in the same way, meaning the, the groups on the top and the bottom are placed identical. So these two are flipped upside down 
and that's not what we want to do and therefore we want to rotate this 180 degrees making sure that the CH now CH3 now is pointing down and the carboxylic acid is pointing up so that's what we're going to do keeping one thing in mind that you can't move this out of the plane you need to rotate either this direction doesn't matter 180 or you go this direction so let's do this 180 degrees and this is what we're going to have now we have the ch3 on the bottom we have this we have the carboxylic acid group and this cl right here if you rotate rotate it's going to be here on the top so you're going to have a cl an h an h and the br is here so the cl and br are still underneath each other but now they are on this side so that's a 180 degree rotation now what you want to do is take this molecule so we can maybe copy this and bring it here and compare these two structures see what we have you notice that this is actually the same compound it's the same representation and therefore these two are the same compound now let's go to the next option so we can delete this and here the carboxylate group is on the top so that is good maybe we can make some room here so we remember this rule about the 90 degrees so delete and we can move this structure here and actually we can erase this so let's bring it here uh, the vertical groups are in place that is correct this carbon right here is the configuration is inverted so it's mirror reflected however this has stayed the same and therefore this structure represents a diastereomer of the compound of the interest so that's going to be d on the other hand if we bring this up option c so let's put it to the side and bring this here what do we notice is that all the chiral centers are reflected through a mirror so it's the mirror image of this compound and it's a non-superimposable mirror image the cls are reflected the brs are reflected and therefore this is the enantiomer of this compound let's also compare this structure so if we bring it here these two are reflected, the BR is reflected, but the key difference is that here this is pointing up and this is pointing down. Which means if I if I could flip this 180 degrees, I don't know if I can. I guess I can, yes. 180, so it's not exactly what we wanted, but it's still 180 degrees, right? So okay, let's bring it one more time. So we rotate. Okay, and this is what we get. So these are in place, it's good. However, you can see that the carbons, the positions are different. Which we could also see if we numbered the carbon chain. So let's say if I numbered here 1, 2, 3, and 4. And we can start from the carboxylic acid. So keep it consistent. 1, 2, 3, 4. So what do I see? On position 2, I have a BR. While here on position 2, I have the CL. So that's a different connectivities and these are the constitutional isomers. So therefore we're going to choose option C. And before that, there are a few things that you want to read. So first of all, read about the Fisher projections here. There's a just a nice representation of what Fisher projections are, what they indicate, the groups on the side, what you can do, what you cannot do with Fisher projections, how you identify the enantiomers and etc. So that's one of the things. And second, there is, I wanted to show a post. If we go to the home page, there is a post about the relationship between different compounds. So in the stereochemistry, this is what you want to go in antimers, diastereomers, the same compounds or constitutional isomers. There's a lot of practice exercises here. So there's an introduction explaining the concepts of this. But in the questions here, you will see a lot of examples where you're comparing maybe a bond line with a Fisher, a Fisher with a Newman, and etc. And the important thing here is that you're learning, you're practicing the concept of converting these compounds, which is 
very helpful in determining the relationship. So it's type of a question that we're doing in this quiz. So for example, there's a lot of them here as well. And it's just a good skill set to be able to convert between different compounds. And also why not you get to recall the general concepts of the relationship between the compounds. There is also a post about converting between different representations, and that's going to be in particular useful answering these questions. So for example, let's say you're converting a bond line to Fisher, so you have this representation, you know which one on the right or on the left side. You can convert, so this one is a bond line to Fisher. You will have Fisher to bond line, some graphical representations, and etc. So it's also a very good post that perhaps you want to go over. And now let's go to the quiz. So we're going to choose C, check, and we go to the next question.